out of all the countries I performed in, my favorite country outside of home is Australia. And I'll tell you why. Australia, much like us in America, has its list of priorities. You know what's not on their list? <laughs> Political correctness. They do not care about your feelings. It's like a country full of Daves. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's very refreshing to be around such a large group of people who speak their minds so freely. And if you know that before you go there, you're going to have an amazing time. But if you don't know that and you show up, it is a culture shock and a half because I showed up and I didn't know. Everybody says, you got to see the beaches. And I went to, to the beach. I had people coming up to me. Hey, somebody help me get them back in the water. <laughs> yeah, look at right there, big fella. Look at you right there. You get, oh, look, he's moving. He's moving. He's moving. Oh, he's crying. He's crying. I bet it tastes like gravy. It's not bullying if everyone does it. <laughs> yeah, that being said, I'm in Australia. Sydney, Australia at the Opera House. For me, it was one of the most iconic places I've ever got to perform in. It was bucket list, definitely. After the show, I wanted to go hang out with some Aussies and see what that was like. I'm hanging out at a pub. First things first, Australian people do not drink Foster's beer. That's an American thing. They don't drink that over there. I tried ordering one to fit in, didn't go over well. <laughs> Bartender looked at me, hey, you like the taste of piss, do ya? <laughs> okay, don't order that again. <sighs> so I'm hanging out with these two Aussies and we're drinking a rum called Bundyberg. At first glance, it looks like a Coca-Cola bottle because there's a polar bear on the front. And then you drink it and you're like, that's not Coke. As we're talking, a third Australian joined the conversation, and he sounded a little bit different from the other two. He had more of a raspy voice, more like, all right, yeah, mate, he did all right. He sounded like a drunk pirate underwater. <laughs> These two guys didn't like him, so they called him a name and they left, and now it's just me and drunk pirate. <laughs> we're talking about life, life in America, life in Australia, talking about our differences. He tells me, that he's a professional knife maker. He's showing me how it's done. He's showing me pictures. We wind up polishing off three bottles of this rum. And drunk wasn't even the right word to describe <laughs> our level. My tour manager, Ryan, he comes up to me and he says, Gabe, time to go. And I look at Ryan and I'm like, but Ryan, I just made a friend. And he makes knives, <laughs> and they're pretty. <laughs> My tour manager always knows how to talk to me no matter what condition I'm in. If I'm drunk, he knows better than to talk to me like I'm an adult. He talks to me like I'm two. <laughs> he looks at me and he says, hey, buddy. <laughs> you hungry? Well, listen, if we don't leave right now, they're going to close McDonald's and you're going to have to eat at the airport. I got to go. I might. You got to go. You got to go. No worries. And he goes to shake my hand. And when he shook my hand, he put his personal pocket knife that he made in my hand as a gift. That's for you, Mike. Thanks for being nice. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to cut cheeseburgers with this. 